Hey everyone, this is Dave Welch I'm in, here in Yorktown I just uh, for my weekly update. And today I'm going to talk about the uh, weekly email that I get from Kathy Wood as well as the different ARC funds and how they performed over the past few years. So the email from Kathy Wood is right here. So uh, this is the uh, latest Kathy Wood email um, that was sent to me on Friday. And there's only two stocks in here. So there's been a lot of volatility with the ARC funds, and I find it curious that uh, there seems to be fewer stocks and fewer stocks that she talks about. Last week, she only talked about three stocks. This week, there's only two. So yeah, she says, hello, we share um, weekly commentaries with investors on stocks and our strategies that have appreciated or dropped more than 15% in a day during the course of the week. We hope you find this commentary useful. So her first stock is Ionis Pharmaceuticals, ticker IONS, leading company in RNA therapeutics, uh, closed down 21% on Thursday after the announcement that its partner Roche, ticker RHHBY, has discontinued their collaborative, excuse me, their collaborative Phase Three Huntington's trial. We believe this news was devastating for patients as the trial was the largest ever conducted for Huntington's disease. In ARC's view, while central nervous system CNS diseases are complex and difficult to treat. Ionis's focus on antisense oligonucleotide. Uh, okay, help me out, guys. Leave in the comments if you can pronounce that word. Oligonucleotides. <laughs> I think I pronounced that right. ASOs, especially with good target selection, could deliver a successful therapeutic intervention. Okay, Aqua Bounty Technologies AQB, uh, a company applying modern genetics to advanced aquaculture production uh, sustainability closed down 18% on Wednesday, potentially because investors were anticipating news on its farm expansion during a mad money interview with the company's CEO, Sylvia Wolf. Instead, on Wednesday morning, mad money published an article focused on AQB's technicals and suggested that the stock had set up for a fall uh, ARC believes that executed correctly, genetically modified salmon could revolutionize the aquaculture market and create a low-cost, sustainable fish force. All right. Boy, that was a difficult read. <laughs> but that's it. Okay. And the next thing I want to talk about is the um, performance of the ARC funds over the past few months. And uh, also I want to talk about... Um, ArcX for a little bit, and uh, why did you know why I'm still investing in Arc, the funds overall, and that's right here. Volatility with the Arc funds. So right now I've got up um, my TD Ameritrade account, and uh, I've got Arc Innovation ETF, and uh, it, it's interesting. Here's this Morningstar rating. It gives it five stars, mid cap growth. Well, I can tell you right now, it's not mid cap growth, because if you look over here. In the Morning Star wrap up, it's calling it a growth large cap, large cap growth. So there's a little disparity between those two things. Um, volume is always above average. You go down to this chart that's a one year chart. You can see that, um, let's click on SP 500. You can see that the ARC fund in the past year has well outperformed, even though it's down over the past three months. Um, it has well outperformed the S&P 500, which is way down here. So uh, this looks like a pretty good buying op opportunity if you have cash on the side. If you're like me, where I kind of bought right here, so I'm down about maybe 15%. Um, I'm just, I've got cash sitting on the sideline, and I've invested a few more shares in it. Um, not a whole bunch, but I'm saving most of my cash for the release of ARCX. Uh, ticker ARKX. It's not. It's in the quiet period right now, but sometime in early April, which is this Thursday, April 1st, or maybe next week, uh, they're going to issue ARKX on one of the exchanges. Not sure which one it's going to go on. I think it's going to be CBOE, just like ARKG is on. But anyway, yeah, so, um, but I'm still, I'm pretty bullish still, even though the rest of the market seems to be bearish recently on ARKK. Um, and let's go down here to the NAV returns. So uh, since inception, 
Uh, it is up 35.97%. Uh, the NAV return is up 36.46. So uh, interesting how they do that that way. Um, and that's a February 28th, 2021. Oh, excuse me, I did that wrong. So market return as of uh, February 28, 2021, uh, since inception, 35.97%. NAV return is 36.38%. That makes sense because they're charging a 0.75% fee every year. So 0.75%. Uh, standardized returns since inception, you've got the, here's that 35 and 36%. Top 10 holdings, of course, they are heavily invested in Tesla. So I'll mouse over that. It's tra it last traded at $618 a share. Uh, Roku is the second one, uh, trading at $300, $306 a share. Square, number three, it's doing pretty good. Uh, Teladoc, and some of these, like Teladoc, is also in ArcG. So, when I talk about ARC X and, and um, you know the space uh, ETF that's about to be issued by ARC, it's probably going to have many of the stocks that are in ARC K, ARC Q, ARC F, you know, all their other funds. Not very likely, it may, but I seriously doubt it's going to have any companies from ARC G or Genomics. Uh, like CRISPR Therapeutics is also in ARC G. Um, okay, what else do we got here? So sector breakdown, um, I would say technology would be the biggest. Here's healthcare, 28%. Uh, communication services, 28%. Technology, 21%. So that's interesting because Tesla, I would consider technology. You think this number would be higher unless they're putting Tesla in a mixed bag, like com consumer cyclical maybe, and technology. I don't know. Let me th know in the po uh, comments. So let's see. I want to look up ARC G. A R K G. Okay, here we go. I also own this one. You can see that over the past, since April of last year, it is up quite a bit, but it's down over the last three months. So um, let's go down. 28, 29 percent since inception market returns not bad and are these annualized returns I don't know it doesn't say pretty sure it's annualized uh, 28 and 29 percent respectively sector uh, teledoc here we go so this is arc g the genomics teledoc is the number one number two exact sciences regeneron number three pacific Twist, Roche, Vertex, Novartis, CareDX, Fate Therapeutics. That's the top 10 as of March 26th. And how do they break that? So this should be majority healthcare, which it is, and the rest being sensitive, communication services, and technology. So that's ARC-G, and I also own ARC, whoops. A R K Q. Autonomous robot, or excuse me, technology and robotics ETF. Let's see, we got, you can see over the past year, it's done quite well. And it is up 26. NAV is up 26.9. Relatively close. So that's curious despite the fact that it's charging this fund just like the other arc funds to charge a 0.75 percent management fee standardized returns looks pretty close 20 am i reading this wrong 26.93 nav return is, return is 26.94 okay tesla oh you know what this might be the dividends a lot of these pay pretty good dividends so there's probably dividends in here that are making up for the management fee. So number one stock again is Tesla, which does not pay a dividend. Not that I'm aware of. If I'm wrong, correct me if I'm wrong. 
Uh, well, we can check that real quick. Let's click on Tesla. Tesla, does it pay a dividend? No dividend. So I'll go back. Okay, Baidu, Trimble, Deere, John Deere, JD.com. And when it says uh, ADR, that's American Deposit Receipts. So it's buying these companies on the American exchanges as they're traded here. So Baidu is a Chinese company. Same with, I think, JD.com is Chinese. Teradyne, Kratos Defense, that's an American defense contractor. Alphabet Class, that's Google. NXP Semiconductors and Komatsu Limited ADR. So I think Komatsu is a Japanese company. American deposit receipts. So this is made up mainly of industrials or cyclical here, 25%, defensive 3%, uh, sensitive 72%, which com it composes of communication services, industrials, and technology. So 72% is made up of this, or the majority is technology. All right, that's it. Okay, that's all I have. And you guys enjoy your weekend. And it's been beautiful here in York. It, it's been raining. But uh, yeah, so I want to show you my uh, plants that I have. And uh, that have been, you know, like my uh, lilies that are growing. And I'm also started some seed, uh, basil from seed and uh, some other things. So it's a beautiful spring here in York County, Virginia. All right, enjoy. Bye. Hey everyone, this is Dave Welch. I'm here um, showing you my lilies that are coming up. And um, so these are lily arbitax. They're already sprouting up. And sorry about the weeds. I'm gonna pull weeds here shortly. And here's my grill. And you can see here's my grapes. Excuse me, not grapes. What am I saying? Blueberries. These are blueberry bushes. And then that's Creeping Jenny down below that I use that as ground cover. And you can see some mint coming up. My other blueberry bush. And uh, nothing else has really popped up yet. But anyway, let me see if I can switch this camera around. And these, this is my basil that I planted from seed and it's starting to pop up. 